Welcome back. Let's catch up a bit to where we left off, then we'll continue our effort to forge opposing Twist Damascus, aka Turkish Twist. In the last video we left with the cliffhanger. We'd flattened some cool wrought iron bars and then put them into a billet with 1095 and 15 and 20 steel, which we ended up welding in a canister. That canister was drawn out, twisted up, cut up and stacked with a piece of W1 steel to make a cutting edge for a knife. This was followed by wailing and gnashing of teeth when we found a deep split, possibly within the wrought iron. The knife was saved with some creative grinding that left it shortened to a serviceable 7 inch sax. So go check out that video for the full treatment. I forged up some wrought iron into a larger piece to incorporate into a second billet with a higher twist rate planned, but chickened out when I saw all the inclusions and I sort of reckoned back to that split we had in the previous knife. So instead of wrought iron, we welded up a billet with 1095, 15 and 20 in mild steel. It was forged into two bars which were twisted tighter than the first and in opposite directions. Those bars were cut up, stacked, alternating to one another, and a hunky piece of 1084 steel was placed along the cutting edge. Next there was tack welding and ganashing of teeth as we heated up and fluxed our billet to forge weld. And that's it, we're all caught up, so let's see about getting this billet of 1095, 15, and 20 in mild steel forge welded up. I was super nervous about this process, but so far it looks like it might be sticking. I'm doing a little bit of hammering along the bevel. It's going to turn the edge up and sort of establish that clip point that we're looking for. Using an angle grinder without a guard is just stupid. As soon as I get a new one, I'll have a guard. My old one broke off. I didn't take it off. It actually, it fell off. It's broken. So far so good. Our welds are holding up, so I think we're in the clear there. Here I've gone ahead and cut out a clip point on the front with the angle grinder. So I've cut out sort of a triangle wedge shaped piece there so we can establish the shape of our sacks. Low grit belt, looks fresh, so I'm wearing gloves. Here I'm pointing out that there's some extra meat on the tank, so I actually went back and forged that out a little bit longer. So far it's about a quarter inch thick along the spine and a scooch under eight and a half inches in length. Here I've given it a preliminary edge and it looks sort of cool. We've got those opposing twists, but it's definitely not what we're looking for. 
Let's draw pictures. Here we're looking top down on our stack and here we're looking at it from the side. The first thing we have to do is clean up the sides by grinding away the folds left over from twisting the bar and that's the stage we're at now. You can see there. As we grind further into the sides of the blade the pattern changes. So here it is to start from the side. There's a bunch of angled lines. It looks like a candy cane. As we grind further into the sides, the lines don't all cross all the way across the bar. They start turning back towards the side they originated from. And there's loops forming. And if we grind almost halfway through the steel, we reveal this sort of concentric loop pattern uh, where you get loops and circles across from each other and star-like formations in the middle. We want something between the second and the third diagram there. So here's a piece that we cut off the tip to form our clip point. I've ground just a little ways into the right side. You can see that candy cane appearance that we were talking about. And I've ground further, probably 30 or 40 percent into the left side. And you can see our loops and cool swirls starting to form. And that's sort of what we're after. The problem, of course, is will we be able to grind far enough into our knife to see that pattern? It's sort of thin right now. We don't have a lot of extra material to get rid of. If I can help it, I really don't want to grind too much farther into it. The spine is about as narrow as I want it. Let's etch it and see where we're at. Alright, I mean we're getting a few little loops forming, but this is really not the pattern I'm after and we're sort of out of material along the spine. I'm in a bit of a distraught state here, so as it's thermal cycling, I decided to make a hair shirt and then I tore it. And then I made another one and I tore that one and I went through about eight of these. Then I was gnashing my teeth until my wife asked me to please stop. So basically, after doing the quench, I decided to get out the 10 inch wheel. Yep, we're going to put an S-grind in our blade. At least I think that's what it's called. It's where you basically hollow grind the middle of the knife. And we're going to see if we can reveal more of our pattern without sacrificing spine thickness. And this type of grind, is, it's like a hollow grind that doesn't go to the edge and it doesn't go to the spine. Uh, they use it in chef knives quite a bit, I think. So let's see if I can get this done. I've never done it before. All right, I mean, I didn't do too bad, considering that was my first time. Let's put it back in the etch and see if our pattern has changed much. Not a whole lot. So I took it back to the 10-inch wheel at this point and ground a little deeper on each side. And what you see me doing here now is sort of touching up the edge. I'm putting the final thickness on the edge portion of the knife, since we didn't put a hollow grind there. Here I trace the radius of the wheel onto a piece of wood and then ground it to that shape and I'm going to get into the hollow ground area with that. Let's start our etching cycles for the final etch. Here's the first etch and it looks pretty good. I've buffed it out here and it looks even cool like that. But I left it dark for the final version. What do you guys think? I didn't quite get the final pattern that I was after, but it still looks pretty cool and I'm happy with it. What do you guys think?